Thank you for being patient through that commercial break, everybody. We're back here. We're talking with Tim. He says he has contention about the sovereignty of God. He says that anyone can believe. That's his disposition. Anyone can believe the gospel. And Tim, I'm going to put you back on the line, but I want to ask you a very serious question here. I want to ask you, do you know any atheists or non-believers in your life currently? Yes, I actually have an atheist neighbor who is about three houses down, who's a part of the American atheist, who's trying to stop religion. He's a very staunch atheist. Great example, Tim. Now, if you went up to that staunch atheist neighbor and said, do you hear Jesus's voice? Do you think, one, he will think you are insane? Or two, or do you think he's going to say, yes, I hear the voice of Jesus? See, when Jesus was speaking to Pharisees, he said, you do not believe because you're not my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one will snatch them out of his hand. I and my father are one. Tim, do you believe that Adolf Hitler heard Jesus' voice or Vladimir Putin? Do you believe that he's hearing Jesus' voice? Because Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. And I'm just wondering, is every single person in reality throughout the course of time hearing Jesus' voice? Or is it as Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, and that has to do with an individual particular calling, 1 Corinthians one twenty six. consider your own calling brethren, not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty according to the flesh have been called. But God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the mighty. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, the debased, the despised things God has chosen. And the things that are not to nullify the things that are that no man may boast before God, but by his own doing you are in Christ Jesus. You see that, Tim, in verse 30? By his own doing. Say it with me, audience. By his own doing you are in Christ Jesus. And we see from these previous verses, it's the ones that God has called individually, the ones that he has chosen. See, the ones that God has chosen, those are the ones he's calling, and those are the ones that hear his voice. Now, Tim, I'm going to put you back on the line, but I want to ask you a very serious question here. How many people can come to Jesus? Keep in mind, Jesus is salvation. To come to Jesus is coming to salvation. So what I'm asking you is how many people, by their own volition, can come to Jesus? Well, everybody can. Everybody can come to Jesus. Anyone at any point at any time can come to Jesus. Well, thank you, Tim, for offering up your humanistic reasoning, completely void of scripture. But Jesus himself says in John 6, 44, no man can come. Now say it with me, folks. Say it with me. No man can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. So Tim's position is that anyone and everybody can come at any time. Now Jesus' position is that no man can come. No man can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. So Jesus gives us the only qualifier and condition by which a person is able to come, and that's if the Father draws. No man can come. Universal inability statement. Completely opposite from what Tim is providing here today. He says that anyone and everyone can come. To Jesus. Jesus says, no man can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. I'll raise him up at the last day. Let me ask you another question here, Tim. Why is it the case that now that you have come to Jesus, you will never be cast out? Well, one day as an unbeliever, I decided to seek after God. And when I sought him and I came to him, there is a promise from him that he will not cast us out. Tim, let me stop you right there, because once again, you have inserted your humanistic reasoning. You said that at one point as an unbeliever, you sought after God. You started seeking after God. The scripture says in the New and Old Testament, Tim, in case you're not aware of it, it says there's none righteous, no, not even one. 
There's none who understand and there's none who seek after God. Now, of course, according to the human experience, it sure seemed like we were seeking after God when we came to Jesus. But Jesus says, all the Father gives to me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I'll by no wise cast out. So when you talk about when you came to Jesus, you said you were seeking him. The Bible says there's none who seek after God. The only way that we came to him is the Father was drawing us. No man can come to me. And that is, no man can seek me unless the Father who sent me draws him. I'll raise him up at the last day. The ones that the Father is drawing are those that he has given to the Son. All the Father gives to me will come to me. Say it with me, folks. Say it with me, audience. All the Father gives, every single one of them. All the Father gives to me. All the Father, every single one of them will get on the carriage to glory. Not a single one of them will miss the carriage. All the Father gives to me will come to me. And the one who comes to me I'll by no wise cast out. See, left to ourselves, the human condition, there's none who understand, there's none righteous, there's none who seek after God. From the human experience, independent from the word of God, we have our subjective opinions, we have our limited finite understanding. And so when we came to Jesus, it sure seemed like we were seeking him. It sure seems like from my limited, finite, subjective experience, I was seeking after Jesus. But then when I operate from God's mind, as he's revealed from his word, it says there's none who seek after God. And the only reason why we've come to him is we were given by the Father. All the Father gives to me will. Say it with me. They will. Not that they might. Not that they may be. Not that it's a possibility. But all the Father gives to me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I'll by no wise cast out, Tim. What I'm trying to point out to you, Tim, is that if we're going to be consistent with Scripture, and I think that's important as believers, as Christians that hold the Word of God above our own, that to be consistent with Scripture, we can never say, I came to Jesus because I was seeking him. I sought after God. That's my boast. I was seeking God. I understood. We could never say that. In light of God's word, we can never say that we were seeking God. Now, we can say that we were drawn by the Father. No man can come to me unless the Father sent me draws him. We can say we were drawn by the Father. We can say that we were given by the Father to the Son. And through the course of human history, every single one that has been given by the Father to the Son will come to him. All the Father gives to me. Say it with me, folks. It couldn't be more important, especially for your free will advocates. You need to get this in your head. All the Father gives to me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I'll by no wise cast out. See, this verse has the sovereignty of God in it and it has eternal security. Now, I notice a lot of them free will folks, they love that eternal security. The one who comes to me, I will by no wise cast out. They just don't love the sovereignty of God aspect in it. All the Father gives to me will come to me. Every single one, all the Father gives, every single one of them will come. And they're given before they even come. You ever think about that, folks? That the people that come to Jesus, you and me, all the Father gives. Every single one of the people that have come to Jesus throughout the course of time, they were given before they even came to Jesus. Before they even came to Jesus, they were given. Now the question someone might ask is, when were they given? Well, they were given before the foundation of the world. Brothers and sisters, Beloved of God, we're always bound to thank God for you from the very beginning. God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and belief in the truth. Do you see that, folks? That from the very beginning, from the foundation of the world, we have other verses that say this, folks. Just as he chose, say it with me, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us to adoption according to the kind intention of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace. Do you see that, folks? To the praise of the glory of his grace. By grace you have been saved. Through faith, this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, least the new man should boast. Faith is not from yourself. It is a gift from a sovereign God who chose us from the very beginning, from the foundation of the world, to be saved. 
Now, Tim, I'm going to put you back on the line, get your rebuttal, get your comments, get any questions that you got. Yes, the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So you can see here, this scripture is saying that God so loved every single individual that he gave his only... I'm going to have to stop you right there, Tim, because what you just did was a switch out of definitions and words to try to import a meaning that you just don't get right there from that passage. And I want to point this out to my viewing audience. These people do this quite a bit. You notice how he switched out world for every individual. He's saying that God so loved every single individual when the Bible says, for God so loved the world. Folks, why do we know that this isn't saying, for God so loved every single individual? Consider the Bible verse that says, Jacob I have loved, Esau I have hated. Those are individuals. God loves one and hates the other. So if God hates an individual, but loves another. We can't say that world means every individual because then we would be lying because God doesn't love every single individual. Jacob I have loved, Esau I have hated. See, if world means every individual and, and when the Bible says for God so loved the world, that means for God so loved every single individual, we have a biblical contradiction because Jacob I have loved and Esau I have hated. The Bible says that God hates all workers of iniquity, folks. So who is the ones that God is loving out of the world? That's the believing ones, the ones who believe. People get caught up on this word, whosoever, which isn't even in the Greek, folks. If you look it up, you'll find out whosoever is not even in the Greek. But they get caught up in this, whosoever believes in him should not perish as though it is an unknown who these people are, whoever it is, whoever it might be, no one knows. God knows, because to God it's not a whosoever. God knows who it's going to be. He's chosen them to be saved. Brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord, we're always bound to thank God for you. From the very beginning, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, belief in the truth. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved. Say it with me, folks. Come on. People get so caught up on this word, whosoever, whosoever, as though God doesn't know who these people are going to be. For me, it might be whosoever. I don't know who the elect are. I don't know those who are chosen. Until there's a positive response to the gospel, I do not know who those who are chosen until they respond positively to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then I know. Think about this, folks. I could say to a crowd of people, Whosoever has on blue jeans, step forward. Whosoever has blue jeans, step forward. And the people that have blue jeans, step forward. Now, does that mean this is a call to every single individual or to those that have blue jeans? See, when it's talking about for God so loved the world, it's talking about his beloved elect, the ones that he is working faith in. Whosoever those that believe are the ones loved by God. And we see this in Scripture, folks. When we get into Scripture, we see a intimate, perfect, unstoppable, unchangeable love that God has for his children, his people, his sheep. Now, I want to thank everyone for joining me today on this broadcast. I want to thank Tim and Kelly and Bill and Sally, all those people that called in here today. I want to thank them for calling. And I hope you tune in next week for next week's program where we talk about the verse that says the spirit whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. Another inability verse. Free will people ought to love this one. So tune in next week. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Take care.